Buckle up, everyone. You are strapped in and ready for the Insurance Hour with me, your host, Carl Sussman, informing, educating, and entertaining Californians one policy at a time. This is Insurance Hour. Hello, hello. This is Carl Sussman, and you are tuned in to Insurance Hour. Thank you so much for being here. Remember, we are taking your questions now. Please give us a call at 559-656-0317. You can also send your questions in by sending an email to questions at insurancehour.com. Also, if you need help right now, you can dial pound 250 from your cell phone. Use the keyword insurance and you'll be transferred to an agent that can hopefully help you right away. Well, we're in the new studio, and I hope you're enjoying the new sound quality and new everything because we are spending all of the money. We are doing everything to be sure that our content and our look and our feel is better for you. So feel free to leave us feedback. Let me know what you think. Give me all the feedback you can. I want to know that you can at least tell the difference, please. Okay, let's jump right in. I spent a week or so ago in the state capital of California speaking with different regulators, different legislators, and some other folks that are involved in the laws and potential laws that are going to be passed in the state of California to try and jumpstart the insurance industry. For those of you not familiar, California is in probably first place when it comes to the state that is suffering the most from the current change in insurance carriers' appetites based on things such as high inflation, climate change, things of that nature. That's a discussion for another show. Most states are actually having some form of problem right now. It's not just California. For example, you're seeing restrictions on business being written in states from Florida, Texas, Colorado, Louisiana, Oregon, you name it, it's happening. Why do we hear about it so much in California? Well, California tends to be the first ones to find the problems and then hopefully first ones to find the solutions as well. So what's happening right now is in California, the primary insurance carriers, meaning the carriers that you're familiar with, are not writing new policies. In addition, policies that are already on the books per se, meaning that they're already active with an insurance company, are either being non-renewed or they're being requested to have significant changes done to the home's condition. You could say that the insurance industry is being sure as much as it can under current regulations that the policies that it has are as clean as possible. Now, I was asked this straight out, so I'll go ahead and answer it straight out to you. Do I think the industry is taking a little bit of advantage of the situation? My answer is probably yes. I think because we are so close, finally, to having some new regulations come out that will enable competition in the state again, I think the carriers are figuring, well, you know what? We're going to clean up as much as we can while we can, since they know once these new regulations come out, they're not going to have that ability again. So having said that, why California and where else? As I said, this is happening. Now, carriers that are not riding in California are doing so because they are claiming that they are not able to make a profit here. I use this analogy. Toyota builds cars, and they do that because they want to sell cars and make money. If Toyota decides they are not selling cars, something's wrong. And the the truth of the matter is the only reason I could think of that they would stop selling cars would be because they can't have that end result. They are not able to find a way to generate profit. In the same light, insurance carriers in California and other states are not able to make money. Therefore, they are not selling policies. Keep in mind also, if an insurance company is not making money, guess chances are they are losing money. And I know I am not playing the insurance company violin here by any stretch of the imagination. I am not an insurance company defender. I'm a business defender. If a business is losing money, then a business is going to change to some type of other tactic to be able to make money again. Also keep in mind, it really doesn't do us any good for an insurance company to write insurance policies if those policies are going to be losing the carrier money because at some point, the carrier will no longer have funds to pay claims. So we don't want to have an insurance company write a policy that it can't pay a claim on. We certainly don't want to have an insurance company keep policies active and have premium being collected if it doesn't feel that it will be able to pay those obligations when the claims start coming in. In California, the California Department of Insurance, one of their key jobs is to be sure that insurance companies are in fact solvent, meaning they have enough money. Recently, one of the larger carriers, State Farm, was lowered as far as their financial stability shows 
by AM Best Company, which is the insurance, I'm sorry, which is the company that actually rates insurance companies. It's called AM Best. And they lowered State Farm from their A rating to their B rating. This, of course, has the Department of Insurance very, very concerned because State Farm insures close to a quarter of every property in California. Not a good feeling when you realize that you want to be with an insurance company that will certainly be there to pay your claims. And if an insurance company is not solvent, if AM Best is saying they are not as solvent as they once were, if the Department of Insurance is monitoring them as they said they are, not a good feeling. The problem is they are not the only carrier that is out there that has having potential financial problems. However, most of the other carriers that are, are also not writing new policies. So what do you do? What do you do when you're in a situation where you're with an insurance company that is having some financial uh, challenges and there really aren't other markets to go to? I don't have a good answer for you because there's just which of the path of less painful do you want to take? Do you want to roll the dice and stay with that company? Do you want to go with a potential unknown insurance company that may be looking to have more money, but you've never heard of them? You don't really know anything about them. Do you want to go with a carrier that's not admitted to do business in California? Those are called non-admitted carriers or surplus lines companies. Remember, their financial solvency has nothing to do with the fact that they're admitted or not admitted. It simply means they are not admitted to do business in the state of California. That translates into more paperwork for the agents, for the brokers, for the consumers, and some consumer protections that would be lost. Or, big or, would you want to say, well, let me go with the California Fair Plan. California Fair Plan, of course, being an organization that California has for people that are unable to obtain insurance anywhere else. And then the California Fair Plan Association will provide basic hazard insurance, which is basic fire insurance only. There's no liability. There's no water damage. There's no theft. There's no workers comp. All of that disappears. And of course, you've probably heard the California Fair Plan is inundated right now with new business applications because people are unable to get a policy anywhere else. Now, does the California Fair Plan have enough money to pay their claims? That's another conversation as well. But I think that it does warrant discussion. Let's take a quick break. When we come back, I do want to talk to you about the California Fair Plan, about their solvency, about their money situation. What does the California Fair Plan do if they don't have enough money to pay claims? Believe it or not, they can do something that no other company or organization can do. If that doesn't get you excited. So stand by. We'll be right back and we'll talk about it. Remember, the phone lines are open, 559-656-0317. Send your questions to questions at insurancehour.com or dial pound 250 on your cell phone. Use the keyword insurance. Get to an agent right away. Carl Sussman with Insurance Hour. We'll be right back. Let's talk about earthquakes for a minute. Look, we know we live in earthquake country here in California. Powerful, devastating earthquakes have happened here before, and science says that they will happen again. They can't tell us exactly when. They can just tell us that it is going to happen. Count on it. Prepare for it. Did you know that earthquakes are not covered by your homeowner's insurance policy? You need a separate policy to give you the peace of mind that you will be able to recover without getting financially wiped out the next time we get hit with a big one. There is a great company here in California that will provide you with earthquake coverage you need at a price you can afford. That company is GeoVera. I have a policy through GeoVera. I really like how easy it is to choose from all of their great coverage options, backed by the financial strength that lets me know that they will be here for me when I need them the most. Go to getquake.com forward slash insurance hour to learn more. That's getquake.com slash insurance hour. Make sure you're ready for the day when the ground shakes again. Hello, hello. This is Insurance Hour. I am your host, Carl Sussman. Thank you so much for being here. We are talking everything insurance, and we want to talk with you as well. Give us a call at 559-656-0317. You can send your questions in to questions at insurancehour.com. If you need help right away, you can dial pound 250 on your cell phone, or depending on your age, you might call it hashtag 250. Use the keyword insurance, and that will transfer you to an agent that can help you right away. If you are having specific issues with your homeowner's insurance, you can also dial that same pound 250 and use the keyword homeowner's insurance, and that will try and get you to someone and expedite the situation to try and get you options for property insurance in the state of California. Before the break, we were talking about options. 
What does somebody do if they do end up going with the California Fair Plan? You've probably heard the California Fair Plan is writing a lot more business than they used to. We were looking at hold times in the hours to get through to someone. Requests for things could be taking days or weeks. And, of course, with all of that going on, there's a situation where the financial solvency of the fair plan is in question. So what does the fair plan do when they run out of money? Again, I hinted to this before the break. The fair plan can do something that no other insurance company or organization can do. And here's what it is. Let's say there's a major catastrophe and the California fair plan does not have sufficient premium money in the bank, basically, to pay for the claims. Here's what they do. They look at every admitted insurance company in the state of California, and based on those companies' market share of property insurance business, they send them what's called a surcharge notice. That means that that insurance company has to write a check to the California Fair Plan so that the Fair Plan has sufficient funds to pay the claim. Think about that for a moment. So if you're a property insurance carrier in the state of California, and you might be looking at a property to insure, and you say, nah, That's too high of a risk for fire. And so you don't write insurance there. So that person goes and purchases insurance with the California Fair Plan. And that person has a loss due to fire with the California Fair Plan. And the Fair Plan does not have enough money. Oddly enough, as an insurance carrier, you will still get surcharged to pay specifically for the fire loss for that client that you actually declined to write yourself. Carriers don't love this, as you can imagine, because what it does is it puts them in a situation where they are going to be paying the bills for high-risk fire areas that they otherwise would not want to insure. Some people call this an insurance mandate, meaning that the insurance carriers, this is their ticket to to do business in California. This is the pay-to-play. If you want to work and you want to write business in sunny California, then you need to be prepared that you are going to be contributing your share to the California Fair Plan in the event there is a loss that the Fair Plan cannot cover. That's just the breaks of the game. That's the way the Fair Plan works. That's the way I believe it's always worked. So when you hear people talking about the Fair Plan and you hear them saying, oh, I don't want to go to the Fair Plan. They're not going to have enough money. There's no way they have enough money. Well, they may not have enough money on hand, but they certainly have enough money to be able to get it in the event there is a large loss. Because again, they're not just going to say, okay, we're going to go and ask the state for money. Nothing to do with the state. They're not going to say, oh, I think we're just going to turn around and, and try and uh, send a bill to other fair plan policy owners to try and recoup the money that we need. Nope, they're not going to do that. They're literally going to go, and this is by law, they're going to go to the actual insurance companies admitted in California. These are all the companies you know, State Farm, Allstate, Farmers, Mercury, Travelers, Safeco, you name it, all of them. They're going to go to those carriers with a bill and say, based on the market share that you have in the state of California, you have X percent of the business. And based on that, that same percentage of the amount of money we need, you're going to pay us. The fair plan has this discussion with the, cons- with the insurance carrier. The insurance carrier writes a check. Interesting tidbit, little side note that I recently found out. Some carriers, as you've probably heard, also are leaving the state of California because for one reason or another, they don't feel that they can survive even with potential new regulations that are coming. They just want out. Guess what? If you're an admitted insurance company in the state of California and you choose to leave, three years will go by before that potential bill in the mail would come from the California Fair Plan. So if you leave in 2024 and next year there's a major wildfire, and the California Fair Plan has to assess admitted carriers. Even though you left a year ago, you are still subject to getting assessed by the California Fair Plan in order to pay that assessment. Pretty interesting. I didn't know that. That's a big bummer, right? Someone's jumping ship because they're saying, I can't do it, I can't do it, I can't do it. And even once they've jumped ship for three years, they got to do it, they got to do it, they got to do it. Now, I'm not trying to say that the California Fair Plan is doing something wrong or that there's something improper about it. This is the way it's designed. Interestingly enough, the California Fair Plan was designed to be the insurer of last resort. And I hate that expression because it's not an insurer. It's an association. It's an organization. An insurer is an insurance company. And the Fair Plan is not a company. I'll give you another example. 
fair plan, since it was designed to be the place of last resort to obtain fire insurance, of course, was getting adversely selected for high risks. Well, that makes sense because the lower risks, the private carriers were writing that business. But now, since the private carriers are not writing business at all, they're not taking new clients on, they're not writing new policies, people who are being non-renewed from some of the companies that are leaving California or simply just can no longer afford the premium that's being paid by their existing policy might be going to the California Fair Plan to get a policy. So now we're seeing almost half, that's a big 5-0%, almost half of all of the new business that the California Fair Plan is writing is no longer in high fire areas. It's in the middle of the city. It's in what we could call the flats. Why? That's not what they're there for. The fair plan is supposed to be there because they're supposed to pay, be covering those risks that are of high exposure, high risk, high fire risk. But now because of this unbelievable shortage in availability for property insurance in the state, fair plan is writing things all over the place. So yes, even though right now, they definitely do not have enough money in the bank to pay for a large loss. Keep in mind that when calculating how much money do they have versus how much would they need to pay out in a major loss, in that calculation, they're taking all of their exposures, including all of the exposures that they have in non-wildfire areas. So it might not be quite as bad as we think or as the numbers show. Believe me, it's bad. They definitely, if there is a large enough wildfire, are going to end up having to surcharge the insurance carriers, but not necessarily to the extent that we think, because again, we expect large, wire, large wildfires to be in brushy areas, not in the middle of the city. And again, half or so of the business that they're writing now is in the middle of the city. Time for another quick break. Remember to reach out with any questions, 559-656-0317. This is Insurance Hour, and I'm your host, Carl Sussman, back in a flash. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, in just a few moments, the window to the magic podcast show will begin. My name is Patrick. My name is Calvin. I'm Mouseketeer Gray. My name is Paul, and I will be your guide through the wonderful world of Disney sound experiences. This show is a weekly trip into the world of the Disney theme parks and resorts. And this is the place where you get to use your ears to surround yourself with the magic. For your safety, please remain seated while listening to the WindowToTheMagic.com podcast. Maybe there's a name for this. Something like Disnotic Obsession. Please visit windowtothemagic.com for more information, or you can find us on Apple Podcasts and in the iHeartMedia app. Hello, hello. This is Carl Sussman, and you are tuned into Insurance Hour. Thank you so much for being here with me. I really appreciate it. You can reach out anytime at 559-656-0317. You can also email us with any questions you might have at questions at insurancehour.com. If you need immediate help with your homeowner's insurance policy, you can dial pound 250, use the keyword homeowner's insurance, and you'll get connected to a system that will get you to an agent right away. Any generic insurance related question you have, you can dial the same pound 250 and just use the keyword insurance. Now, keep in mind, I really would like to get your feedback. If you hear something that you're not in agreement with, or you believe I'm saying something inaccurate. This is not an ego thing. I want to know what it is that I've said that's incorrect. I want to know what the source is so I can correct it. My goal is to always provide you with the most accurate information that I can. So if I'm saying something that is factually inaccurate, I ask you to please send me an email to questions at insurancehour.com or give me a call at 559-656-0317 and tell me. Because for the sake of everyone who's paying attention, for everyone who's tuned in, we want to provide accurate information. And that's the best thing that I can do is is give you the best information that I have, but I'm not perfect. So always be sure that I will take your comments seriously. If you hear something that's wrong, say something. Is that what they say at the airport? If you hear, if you see something, say something. Anyway, 
we were talking about the California Fair Plan. We were talking about money and claims and, and things of that nature. So let's continue on with our, our conversation about the California Fair Plan a bit, because there are some other misunderstandings that I think are important to address. Now, the California Fair Plan does cover fire insurance. We got that, right? But they also cover smoke damage. Well, smoke damage, what does that mean? Is smoke going to damage the outside of your house? Believe me, enough of it, it will. Smoke damage tends to happen also on the inside of the house. If you've ever been in a situation, as I have been, where you have to evacuate because of a wildfire, you sit and you wonder, how's my home? How's my home? Is it going to make it? Is it burned down? What's happening? You might find yourself calling the landline, if you still have one, and you figure if the answering machine, if you have one, still picks up, then your house is still there. Or you might have a ring camera or a nest camera or some type of video stream going, and you might be checking that to see if your house is still there. Keep in mind, internet connection might go down, right? The power might go out, your house might still be there. But these are things that when you have to evacuate from your home, you will do. Anyway, smoke damage is something that is also covered on the California Fair Plan. Unusual, but it is covered. In addition, you can get coverage from the Fair Plan for vandalism. Now, you might stop and say, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. The Fair Plan is basic insurance only. That's fire. Okay, I'll take smoke because that's smoke, right? Part of fire. But vandalism, where does that come from? Well, the California Fair Plan does offer, if selected, meaning if you request it, coverage for vandalism. Now, that's someone that might be coming to the house and doing damage, right? Now, this does cost more money, as you can imagine, because it's a different risk than the risk of fire. You will find a lot of times that people, when they're doing construction on their home for an extended period of time, they should have a course of construction policy or some type of properly written policy for the condition that the property is in during construction. But one of the things that tends to happen on construction sites more than anything else is theft or vandalism. There's a big difference. As, as long as we're talking about the fair plan still, vandalism can be covered, theft cannot. There is no option to purchase theft coverage for the California Fair Plan from the California Fair Plan, so don't look for it. If you are getting a policy with them, just think to yourself, this is basic, basic insurance for fire. And if there are a few other things that you're able to get and the cost is not significantly different, like vandalism or damage by smoke, okay, great. But don't count on that. Don't put that in your psyche that, oh, I can get all these different things from the Fair Plan. No. You are literally just going to be thinking about fire insurance. There's no slip and fall coverage. There's no coverage if a pipe breaks or if there's a storm and water comes in from the roof. If somebody slips and falls, uh-uh, nothing. If you have a gardener or a housekeeper or some, any type of workers' compensation uh, exposure, none of those things are covered by the FAIR plan. Incidentally, since I said workers' compensation, there is a requirement in the state of California for homeowners insurance companies that offer a homeowners insurance policy to offer a basic workers' comp insurance policy as well. Your home insurance policy may have that on there if it's a California-admitted company. If it doesn't, you should find out how that's possible. And more importantly, if you have a gardener, housekeeper, anyone that's doing work on your house or working in your house, you probably need to have workers' compensation insurance as well. It's not expensive. Check with your agent or broker or the insurance company directly and tell them, say, hey, I have a part-time assistant that comes in you know, every couple of hours a day, blah, blah, blah. Do I have coverage for this? If not, can I get it from you? And remember, depending on what they're doing, if they're helping you personally versus they're helping you do your business out of home, business exposures, totally different ball game, right? I know people are hesitant sometimes to want to discuss these things with their insurance company or their insured, their insurance agent or broker. I get it. <clears throat> don't ask, don't tell, right? If they don't know, it's better that way. They'll just pay for it. Well, here's the thing. Again, I can understand the reluctancy in wanting to discuss certain aspects or certain exposures you might have with your carrier or broker because you don't want to alert them to the situation. But understand one thing you're not going to create coverage by not asking. If it's not covered, it's not going to be covered regardless of if you ask them or not. However, if you do ask them and they say no, they can then tell you what you need to get it covered. I can't emphasize this enough. And I get it. People are like, oh, I don't want to rock the boat. I don't want to have any problems. And believe me, the carrier doesn't want any problems. Your agent or broker doesn't want to have any problems. 
And what a big problem is, is having to tell someone that's not covered. And even worse than having to say that is having to say that's not covered. And it could have been had you told me you had this situation, we could have gotten coverage for you, right? Don't be that customer. Don't put yourself in that situation. Understand, take that away from this today. Better to ask Find out what's there and what's not, because if it's not there, it's still not going to be there after you ask, but it will give you the opportunity to know loud and clear that it's not there and hopefully do what you need to do in order to get that coverage put back in place. Does that make sense? I don't want to preach about this too much. I know that your relationship with your agent or broker or directly with the insurance company is, is your business, but from my perspective, having been doing this for over three decades, I can tell you you are much better off to have the conversation, know what you have, know what you don't have, and don't just assume, if I don't ask, I'm okay. Once I ask, if they say no, then I know. You're right. Once you ask and you know, then you'll know if you have it or not, but it's not going to create any coverage for you by asking, right? Does that make sense? I hope it does. Let's take another quick break. When we come back, I want to talk a little bit more about different types of policies, different types of claims, and what you might be able to do when dealing with them. This is Insurance Hour. I am your host, Carl Sussman, and we will be back in a flash. Do you need homeowner's insurance? Has your previous insurance company left the state, non-renewed your policy, or maybe they just raised your premium to an amount that you simply can't afford? Whatever the situation, we can help. Just dial pound 250 on your cell phone and say keyword insurance quote, and we will connect you with an agent who can assist you right away. Or if you prefer, you can visit us online at insurancehour.com forward slash quotes. Whether you're looking for homeowner's insurance or auto insurance, we'll send the best options straight to you. So what are you waiting for? Simply dial pound 250 and say keyword insurance quote, and we will connect you with a live agent to help provide competitive quotes for your homeowner's insurance or auto insurance. Don't get caught unprepared. Insure what matters with an insurance company you can trust and with a premium that you can afford. Don't put off until tomorrow what you should have done yesterday. Simply dial pound 250 on your cell phone and say keyword insurance quote. Hello, hello. This is Insurance Hour, and I'm your host, Carl Sussman. Thank you so much for being here with me today. If you have questions, remember the phone lines are open. You can call 559-656-0317 or send your questions in to questions at insurancehour.com. If you need help right away, you can also dial pound 250 and ask and use the keyword insurance. Get connected with an insurance agent right away. If you have a specific homeowner's insurance issue, you can also dial pound 250, use the keyword homeowner's insurance, and you again will be connected to someone that can help you right away. If you have questions that have not been answered in this show, or you might have missed something, maybe you're coming in in the middle, don't worry, just go to insurancehour.com. You can find us and find the links there to subscribe to the podcast, to find the show on YouTube. We are pretty much everywhere. You name it, we're out there. You know the places that you listen to and watch content. Chances are you will find us there. Lucky you. Now, before the break, we were talking about some different types of claims and insurance exposures that you might have and how to deal with them. So I wanted to take a minute just to go over, just on a very high level, some of these claims and how to deal with them. The first type of claims, and I know we're probably all familiar with them, are auto insurance claims, right? And the auto insurance claims gets you back, it it tends to be one of the more emotional claims that you'll deal with because what is the first thing you think of when you hear auto insurance claim? What, What feeling do you get? Fault, right? Because what gets people more upset than anything else is having an auto insurance accident that is not their fault and they have to deal with stuff. They have to deal with the insurance broker. They have to deal with a claims adjuster. They have to deal with the insurance company. They're without their car, then the body shop, the rental car. Oh, It is heartache, big time heartache. And I have to tell you, I get it. I get it because I see it on every side. I see what it's like for the insurance carriers. I see what it's like as a consumer. Don't think I haven't put in my own claims. I see what it's like as a broker. I deal with our customers when they have claims if there's a need for it. So I understand it from from pretty much every possible perspective that you could have. Here's my advice when you've had an auto insurance claim. Take a deep breath. I know. It's obnoxious. Take a deep breath. If you're walking away from the car accident 
then let me tell you, that's the most important thing. Fault, not as important. Damage to your car, not as important. I happen to be someone that was involved as a passenger in an automobile accident where the driver was killed. I can tell you from personal experience, nothing is more important than the people in the car, not the car. Okay? So stop and remember that if you are involved in an accident and you're angry and you have to deal with all this stuff that it could have been a lot worse because you are, again, if you're walking away from the accident, then you consider yourself in a good place. Everything else can be worked on. Everything else can be dealt with. You and the people in your car, those are things that are much harder to fix. So keep that in mind when it comes to auto insurance. Another type of insurance claim that you'll see, and of course we've been talking about it today already, are homeowner's insurance claims. Now, I want to back that up a bit because when I say homeowner's insurance, I'm saying that because that's what most people think of when you hear about, about property insurance. Property insurance is a broader type of insurance product. That would encompass things like homeowner's insurance, condominium owner's insurance, and even renter's insurance. All of those things fall under property insurance. Even a single family home that's rented out is property insurance, okay? So don't get stuck when you hear someone saying homeowner's insurance, homeowner's insurance, homeowner's insurance. Remember, that doesn't necessarily mean that we're talking about a single family home that somebody owns and lives in, right? Just not the case. Try, if you can, and imagine it more as property insurance, because now you're talking in a more global sense about a wider range of products. And guess what? They're all regulated similarly, okay? Pricing is different, but more uniform among companies. But again, property insurance, not just home insurance, all right? Another type of claim that you're going to be potentially involved in on one end or the other is medical malpractice. Medical malpractice claims are really difficult, right? Because now we're talking about our bodies. Now we're talking about health. My advice to you if you're involved in a med malpractice claim is be patient. This is not a fast process. You're talking about potentially the livelihood of physicians, and you're also talking about the livelihood and health of the patient. So you don't want it to go quickly. You want it to be done properly. And believe me, our system, our legal system in general makes sure if you have good representation or you simply have a good adjuster, depending on your circumstances, you can pretty much be rest assured that if you stay on top of things, the system will be sure that you go about getting the resolution that is likely what you are entitled to. Another type of claim that you might see is workers' comp insurance. Workers' comp insurance is an interesting one because it's called, it's considered a no-fault insurance. If you are hurt at work, and there are exceptions to the rule, but for the most part, if you're hurt at work and you have a workers' comp claim, it's not at fault. You don't have to prove that the employer did something wrong that made you get injured. Again, if that's the case, there are other exceptions to that. But in general, if you're hurt at work and there's a workers' comp policy in force, you should expect that you'll be able to deal with the workers' comp system. Now, I have to tell you, and this, this is going to blow your mind, Workers' comp, in my mind, might just be the single most complicated and, how do I say this without getting a lot of hate mail, messed up system that we have. I was recently involved with a client that had a workers' compensation claim, and the adjuster, the workers' comp adjuster, told the client straight out, well, the best thing to do would be X, Y, Z, but workers' comp doesn't let you as the consumer and the insured do X, Y, Z. Only an attorney can do that. And I actually got on the phone and I said, wait a minute, are you literally telling the client, go get an attorney? Because the right thing to do, only they can do? And the adjuster said, yeah. And my mind was blown. I was thinking, how did we get to a system where a consumer literally, mind you, this is potentially someone that's hurt, right? They've had a worker's comp claim. How did we get to a system where you have to have legal representation in order to have the process done, let alone the adjuster telling you straight out, the right thing to do is this, but you as a consumer cannot do it. You have to go get an attorney to do it for you. It is just mind-blowing. And fortunately, there are good attorneys out there that will help because if not, what would a consumer do? 
when there's an insurance product, an insurance system that almost mandates you have legal representation to be able to make it through the process. It's it's so bad. I got to move on from it. As a matter of fact, I got to take a break and like wipe some sweat from my brow. It just just drives me bonkers. Quick break. When we come back, we'll be right at it. This is Insurance Hour. I am your host, Carl Sussman. Be sure to call with any questions, 559-656-0317, and we will be back in a flash. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, in just a few moments, the window to the Magic Podcast Show will begin. My name is Patrick. My name is Calvin. I'm Mouseketeer Gray. My name is Paul, and I will be your guide through the wonderful world of Disney sound experiences. This show is a weekly trip into the world of the Disney theme parks and resorts. And this is the place where you get to use your ears to surround yourself with the magic. For your safety, please remain seated while listening to the Window to the Magic.com podcast. Maybe there's a name for this. Something like Disnotic Obsession. Please visit windowtothemagic.com for more information, or you can find us on Apple Podcasts and in the iHeartMedia app. Hello, hello. This is Insurance Hour, and I am your host, Carl Sussman. Thank you so much for being here with us today. The phone lines are open at 559-656-0317. Any questions you might have, please send an email to questions at insurancehour.com. If you need help right away, you can dial pound 250, use the keyword insurance, and get connected to someone who can help you right away. For the break, we're talking about different types of claims that you might have, different types of insurance policies that might have certain types of coverage that would provide for you and that you could obviously have a claim with. Another one I want to talk about is more of a newer type of loss, which is a cyber loss, which would require cyber liability insurance. Now, what does that mean? Again, we could do an entire show and do nothing except talk about cyber insurance. So let me just give you a little taste, a little sample, a little bit of an appetizer, if you will, about what cyber insurance covers. First of all, understand that the majority of homeowners insurance companies, remember property insurance, will not, N-O-T, provide coverage for a cyber loss. Now, people might think it would. They would be wrong. Now, let's talk about what types of cyber losses there might be. You ever get that text message on your phone and it just says, hello, or hey, or did you just call me? What are some other good ones I've seen? Are you looking for work? What's new? These generic, bizarre text messages from a number you don't recognize or some from a a phone number that's similar to your own? Well, these are specifically targeted to you to try and get you to engage with them. You might even text back and say, wrong number. Ah, now the person, the system, the organization knows this is a live phone number, right? You've already given them something by acknowledging that, hey, is this a wrong number? Why are they doing this? Well, at some point, they want to get into an interaction with you, a discussion with you. They are actually looking to take advantage of you to the point where you might buy something from them or send them money. Who knows? This is not a good thing. If you don't get, if you get a text message and you don't recognize it, assume it's bad, especially if it's one of these generic messages, okay? If you happen to fall for one of these things, then a cyber insurance policy might be able to be there to help you. That's just one example. You've been hearing forever, don't click on the link. Don't click on the link. If you don't know the sender, don't click on the link. And now we're turning around saying, well, it might even look like it's from someone you know, but it's not from them. Don't click on the link. Now, if you do click on that link and something happens in your computer, you've clicked on something and that activates some type of uh, spyware or malware in your computer. Maybe you get locked out of your computer, so you literally cannot get to your documents or your files, unless you pay a ransom, that's called ransomware. There, The amount of ransomware that is going on right now is truly, truly mind-blowing. Because if you 
end up with one of these ransomware products if you don't have a backup to your system, and particularly one that's considered an incremental backup, meaning that it backs up the difference of your system fairly frequently, where you can roll back and look to see right before the computer was infected and restore your system to that. There is no way to get back to your data without paying the ransom, which it's unbelievable, but it's true. So ransomware and the amount of money that you would need to spend either to pay the ransom or to rebuild your system and get the data back that you've lost could potentially also be covered under a cyber insurance policy. I'll tell you another story. There was a customer once that where their system at the office was infected. It was a CPA firm, I believe, by ransomware. They could not figure out how it got into their system. They have a super amazing IT company. They have an, you know, all of their people are you know, youngish, right? So they know how to use computers. They know what to look out for. They have all their viruses um, programs up to date. They do everything right. They could not figure out how their system was infected. And this was probably three or four months after the claim had happened, after everything, the dust had settled. And the owner called me and he said, Carl, we figured it out. And to be honest, I forgot who he was. I, I said, oh, really? He said, yes, remember we had that malware, that um, ransomware on our system in the office. And of course, then I remembered. And I said, oh, right, right. What happened? How did it happen? Turns out somebody was coming in, leaving flyers on their counter uh, for, for uh, pizza, coupons for pizza. I mean, how benign could that be? How often do you have someone walk in your office and leave flyers with menus or discounted coupons for different products or services, right? Pretty common. Well, this particular person dropped off the coupons and also they later figured out accidentally, and I'm making air quotes, accidentally left a little USB flash drive. Again, pretty innocuous, innocuous right? Well, what do you do? Well, you want to, you, you see this USB drive sitting there and you think, oh, I got to get this back to the person. Maybe their name or some type of identifying information is on this drive. So what do you do? You pop it in your computer and boom, the ransomware does its thing. The computer is infected. It infects the rest of the computers. Wow. True story. So I guess the, you should keep in mind the moral of that story is if you find a random USB drive, little thumb drive, flash drive, jump drive, call it what you will, lying around, don't assume, oh, I'll just put that in the computer and see what it is. No. Assume the worst. Assume that it's something that is going to be bad. It's something that could potentially be harmful. Because whatever it is, unless it's your hard drive or someone in the office or someone in your home that is looking for it or recognizes it, no good could come of it. You're not going to find a miscellaneous drive that you put in your computer and it says, hey, thanks for finding this. I think we're going to give you some money just because, right? It's not going to happen. If it's not yours, it doesn't belong to someone that you know, nobody recognizes it, put it in the trash. Get rid of it. Believe me, it's frustrating because sometimes curiosity kills the cat and you really want to get and get into that thing and see where it came from. I know I would, but not now. Do not do it. If it's not yours, it's not one recognized, get rid of it, okay? Another one I want to tell you about when it comes to cyber insurance, and this is a big one. People will actually make phone calls, phone calls nowadays, and try and scam you into giving money. Now, I'm going to tell you a true story as soon as we come back from the break that is going to blow your mind. You do not want to miss this. Definitely don't want to miss this because this is happening in large scale at this point, and it's only going to get worse. This is Insurance Hour. You are tuned in here, and I am Carl Sussman, your host. We are talking about all things insurance related. I want to hear from you. Please give me a call at 559-656-0317, or you can send questions, feedback, whatever it might be, just not hate, please no hate, to questions at insurancehour.com, or dial pound 250, use the keyword insurance if you need help, and you will get someone to help you right away. And we will be back in a flash for our final segment for today. 
Are you feeling lost in the search for the right insurance? Making call after call, only to find no one willing to go that extra mile for you? At Sussman Insurance Agency, we understand that frustration, and we're here to change your experience. Where others see obstacles, we see opportunities. While many might shy away from jumping through hoops, at Sussman Insurance Agency, we're prepared to leap. Looking under every rock, exploring every avenue. That's not just what we do, it's who we are. Our dedicated team doesn't just offer policies, we provide solutions. Solutions born from persistence, expertise, and a genuine commitment to finding you the best coverage possible. We don't just meet expectations, we surpass them. If you're tired of hearing no or it's not possible, it's time to turn to a team that believes in yes and let's make it happen. Don't settle for less. Reach out to Sussman Insurance Agency at 877-411-5200. Visit us online at sussmaninsurance.com or email sales at sussmaninsurance.com. Let's uncover the insurance solutions you deserve. Sussman Insurance Agency, going the extra mile every time. Hello, hello. This is Insurance Hour, and I am your host, Carl Sussman. Thank you so much for being here with me today. Remember, the phones are still open at 559-656-0317. You can also send in any insurance-related questions to questions at insurancehour.com. If you need help right away with your homeowner's insurance, and if you're in California and a lot of other states, actually, you probably do, you can also dial pound 250 on your cell phone, use the keyword homeowner's insurance, and we'll get you to someone that can help you right away. Before the break, I promised you I was going to tell you a true story about cyber insurance and a true story about a claim that could have happened. Family is away on vacation. They are in Hawaii and their kids not in Hawaii. Well, I guess that's what makes it partly a vacation, right? The uncle and the grandmother of this kid get a phone call from someone purporting to be an attorney saying, your grandson or nephew, depending on who they were speaking with initially, is in jail. They were driving drunk. They killed someone. They're in jail. We got to get them out of jail. I'm willing to represent you. Let, you know, let's talk about how we're going to get this handled. Now, of course, the grandmother and the uncle are having a, are freaking out. Oh, my God. He was driving drunk. Oh, my God. He killed someone. Oh, my God. He's in jail. I mean, where it just got worse and worse and worse. So this attorney was, you know, calling back and forth, said, oh, and the, I got to transfer you to someone at the, at the judge or someone in the court. Transferred calls, click, 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 different voice, some more talking, things like that. Told them the city the jail was in. Mind you, these are not unsophisticated people, okay? But these were amazing actors. So they finally said that they needed to get some cash quick to be able to get them to, to get the, the nephew slash grandson bailed out of jail from this, right? And I suppose the fact they wanted cash concerned the 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 uncle. And he said, well, uh, how, do I, how do I know this is real? We want to talk to him. And of course, there's already a pre-prepared answer. Oh, we can't talk to him. You know, there's no uh, phone in the jail, you know, and he already called, made his first call, and he, he called for an attorney and blah, blah, blah. So it started to get a little fishy. But again, look, I, I'm not going to be able to talk to you indefinitely. You want to do this? Fine. If not, you know, you'll find out about it later. Not you later, but meanwhile, you know, he's in jail, whatever, whatever you want to do. So they turn around finally after enough pushback and they get the kid on the phone. Not a lot, just saying, hello, hello, is it really you? It's me, help me, I, I, I want out of here. And that's it. Now, did the voice sound right? I, I'm not sure I didn't hear it, but it sounded close enough that they kept going. So they rushed to the bank, they need to get cash. They rushed to the bank to get cash, they're getting all of this together, getting all this ready. Meanwhile, one uncle calls the other uncle and they're all freaking out. And they're saying, well, we got to get this handled. What are we going to do? They get back to the house. They got money, right? They got cash. They're calling this phone number back that is supposed to be this attorney that's in this courthouse. All this is happening. And they say, something just didn't sit right with that phone call. What was it about the nephew slash grandson, what was it about what he said or how he said it or how he sounded? You know, they started second guessing themselves a little bit. What could it be? They're thinking, thinking, thinking. Now, pause the story. If they had a cyber insurance policy, the first thing that they should have done the moment they received that call is call the cyber insurance carrier and have them call to validate some of this information. But again, 
I want to bring that up to you now. I'll get right back to the story because cyber insurance does more than just pay claims. They are there as consultants if it's a good policy. Okay, back to the story. So they're thinking, what is it about that call that just didn't seem right? Well, it finally occurred to them. It finally occurred to them. The grandson, when he was speaking, called the grandmother grandma. And it turns out this is an ethnic family. And the grandson never uses the word grandma. He uses a different term of endearment in another language to the grandmother. So now all of a sudden they all stopped and they looked at each other and they said, oh my God, I think this is phony baloney. They get back on the phone with the attorney. The attorney says, I have someone that will be able to be by your house to pick up the cash in the next half an hour or so. Is everything ready? They start to get a little bit of pushback. Well, you know, we're not 100% sure about this. Can we talk to uh, can we talk to him again? No, no, you can't talk to him again. That That's not possible. It, it can't happen. And why does this have to be cash? It doesn't have to be cash to the court. But if you want me to take care of you, I don't know who you are. I'm not going to take a check from you. So you're going to give my assistant cash. And once they have the cash, I will know that I can go and start representing you. All the right answers, right? All the right answers are going on. The The, the license number that you could go online and check the name with the state bar and be sure that it's correct. I mean, lots of things clearly well executed, well rehearsed and ready to go, ready for all of the objections until that point. Because at that point, the two uncles started to really push back and they said, you know what? We think this is bullshit. Oop, excuse me. We think this is baloney. We don't believe this. And instead of just hanging up and moving on, this scammer kept going. Hey, it's your grandson, your family member. I don't care. You want to do it. I don't want to do it. They get into a screaming match. And I have to assume by this point, they realize, obviously, this is a scam. No attorney is going to be doing this. They're screaming at each other. They're swearing at each other. They finally hang up the phone. End of story. Now, one little wrinkle to this story. Nah, not a wrinkle. One little bonus fact. The parents of the grandson slash nephew in this true story is yours truly, me. I'm the dad. It was my son they were impersonating. And yes, my brother-in-law, and yes, my mother-in-law. And I ask you, and I ask for your feedback, do you not think that the uncle and the grandmother, somebody should have called the parents and said, hey, your son might be in jail? Yes, I'm a little annoyed by this. I don't think I'm over it yet. And it was a long time ago. All right, true story. This can happen and it's getting worse and it's getting, and they're getting better at it because they're able to use AI. They're going to be able to make, to uh, mimic voices and things of that nature. So this problem is not going to be getting better. It's going to be getting worse. You need to be diligent with people. Maybe have a safe word with your family members that you can always ask them right away to know. On that happy, happy note, I will thank you once again for being here. Remember, any questions you might have, please feel free, including feedback, to call at 559-656-0317. Send an email to questions at insurancehour.com. You can also dial pound 250 on your cell phone. Use the keyword insurance to get transferred to a live agent anytime. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your questions. Thank you for staying along with me through this journey as we grow, as we continue to pass on accurate and information to people about insurance to help them make better choices and to understand the coverage they have and utilize it to the best of their ability. I'm Carl Sussman, and you've been tuned in to Insurance Hour. I do want to thank all of you for taking the time to listen today. I know insurance is not necessarily the most sexy concept. It's not the most exciting thing in the world. It is important that you understand what it is you're getting, what you should be looking for, red flags, you name it. You just need to know more than you used to. Things are more complicated than they used to be. If you have any questions, please reach out to me directly. You can email your questions to questions at insurancehour.com or call and leave a voicemail at 559 559- 656-0317. Educating and entertaining Californians one insurance policy at a time. This is Insurance Hour. This show is dedicated to Shamrock Papa.